There are five main phases in the cardiac cycle. Phase one shows atrial contraction. Phase two, ventricular isovolumetric or same volume contraction. Phase three is ventricular ejection, so systole of the ventricles. Phase four is ventricular isovolumetric relaxation, so the same volume, however, the walls of the ventricle are relaxing. And phase five is passive ventricular filling. This is best shown using a graph showing pressure along the y-axis and time along the x-axis. The first line we're going to plot is that of left ventricular pressure. You can see it starts at a lowish pressure on the millimetres of mercury axis, having an initial blip at the start and then exponentially going up as the pressure increases as the ventricle squeezes. As the pressure of the ventricle walls relaxes, you can see the pressure curve falls back down towards normal, readying for another contraction. As we've already said, phase one is atrial contraction, so we're going to plot a line of atrial pressure, and that sits just above the curve of left ventricular pressure. Increasing atrial pressure from atrial contraction causes the first blip on the yellow left ventricular pressure line. You can see a second increase in pressure just after this, and this is because the ventricles are contracting and cause the atrioventricular valves to bulge back into the atria, therefore increasing pressure transiently. It subsequently falls as the blood in the ventricles leaves and it goes elsewhere in the body, reducing that bulge and therefore the pressure. The final blip in the atrial pressure line is due to the closure of the aortic valve. This happens because for a short space of time all the valves in the heart are closed so pressure increases in the atrium, but now because the aortic valve is closed you'll get passive refilling of the ventricles and pressure therefore drops again afterwards, ready for the next cycle. The next line that's important to plot is one of aortic pressure. You can see that the pressure is falling as the aortic valve is closed, so the blood is moving out of the aorta to supply the body's organs and tissues, but it's not yet replaced by blood from the ventricles. Once the aortic valve opens, however, this coincides with the large spike in left ventricular pressure. The pressure within the aorta increases just above the pressure in the left ventricle. As ventricular contraction begins to fade, the pressure in the aorta falls and rises transiently with the closure of the valve again. This is due to backflow against a closed valve. This falls again rapidly to begin again and the cycle starts once more. The timings of the heart sounds are important, so S1 is at the opening of the aortic valve, and we'll mark it here, and S2 is at the closure of the aortic valve, and we'll mark it here. The last thing I do when I'm drawing the cardiac cycle is superimpose an ECG over the top. The P wave coincides with atrial depolarization and its subsequent contraction, as seen in the atrial pressure wave. The QRS complex is the depolarization of the ventricles, and so the QRS is complete just prior to aortic valve opening. The S point usually sits over the period of the S1 heart sound. Repolarization of the ventricles is a slower process, and this is represented by the T wave and is complete by the second S2 heart sound, just after the closure of the aortic valve. An ECG trace I find is useful because it puts the pressure changes in context of electrical changes in the heart, which as clinicians is what we're most used to looking at. I hope this short overview has been useful. As always head over to propophology.com for more resources and don't forget to hit subscribe on this channel to see when our next videos are coming out.